city. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. <laughs> I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to be. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. On infiltration instead of invasion. On subversion instead of election. On intimidation instead of free choice on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a Titan myth, a highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live edition. It is August 5th, 2000 and... 13. You know, I was going to, admittedly, like I said last week, I was actually going to take today off to get some work done uh, behind the scenes for our uh, Truth-a-thon coming up next week here at Unbound Radio. But uh, this weekend, uh, I, with, you know, using Federal Jack, uh, working with Shepard and Bellis over at the Intel Hub, uh, and Shepard's the one that put the article together, uh, uh, and I, I helped a little bit behind the scenes. But Shepard did the, you know, the, the mainstay of the article, and then we worked on releasing it together as a team to kind of, you know, give it that that push out there and get everybody to see it. We released an article which really, uh, I guess the only way to say it is it, it actually really, when you see it, when you see the pictures in the article, it actually kind of shakes you to your core. So I decided to come on live tonight to do a breakdown of this article and a breakdown of the information and. I couldn't do this breakdown properly without uh, my good friend, uh, fellow radio show host, Joe Joseph. And Joe's going to hang out with me tonight. And, you know, we're not going to, you know, we like to kid around sometimes when he's on. But tonight we're going to, you know, him and I are going to be all serious because we, we're going to break this down for you. Uh, Joe has an understanding of the military and of uh, combat tactics uh, like nobody else at the network. So he's the only other person I could think of right off the bat just to call up and be like, hey, you need to come on and we need to break this down. Because him and I have talked about this off air all weekend. We've been going back and forth and we've just, uh, you know, he's got the same feelings I do. So really quick, I'm going to bring Joe on and then I, because I know the break's coming up in about a minute. Joe, thanks for doing two, an extra two hours tonight, first of all. Yeah, that's great. I'm just um, <clears throat> uh, on my second pot of coffee now, so I should be good. Unbelievable, dude. It, it just—I guess that's the only way to describe it. But I—I I, I can't say that. Yeah, term anymore. it's not unbelievable. You know that. It's, I know it's totally believable considering what they're doing and the fact that we already know they do this. It's not the first time you've heard of these little mock cities. The only problem is, is the detail they get into on this one. I mean, it—it's really shocking. It's creepy is the term I would use. Creepy. When when you look at it, you're like, ooh. And there's no mistaking it. If you look at it. You get what, exactly what it looks like. There's definitely no mistaking it, although th there are critics that are already saying, well, we'll get into that. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, so I'm sure by this point you're like, all right, Popeye, exactly what article are you talking about that 
bothered you to the point that you wanted to actually sit and do a two-hour breakdown of it? Yeah, and the implications. A, Popeye, it's, what is it? What what could it, you know, what article are you talking about? Yeah, well, that would be welcome to Fort Chaffee, the mock American town set up for domestic urban warfare training. You can read it over at federaljack.com. It's right under the featured articles section, and it's also uh, in the slider. I put it up in both spots as well. And it's already, uh, one of the listeners already uh, dropped it into the chat room. Thank you, listener. And I just dropped it in the chat room, I the link to it for a second time. And I urge you, actually, to go to the chat room. Go to federaljack.com. Upper right-hand corner, there's a uh, widget that says down the rabbit hole. There's a red and a green button. Click the red one. It'll bring you to the Listen Live page. Just go there for, even if you don't have to chat with anybody, but go to the chat room itself right now. Uh, in there is a link to the article. Now, if you're listening to this on Rebroad, or if you're listening to this on the Federal Jack Archive or the YouTube Archive later on, you can always go to federaljack.com, find the article. The title, again, is Welcome to Fort Chaffee, the Mock American Town Set Up for Domestic Urban Warfare Training. I'm sure if you type in Fort Chaffee, the article will come up. In fact, I know it will because it's one of the tags they put in the article to make it easy to find. So just type in Fort, F-O-R-T, space C-H-A-F-F-E-E if you're listening later on, and you'll be able to follow along with the broadcast. Now, anyway, if you go to that page, you're going to see a bunch of pictures. The first two are embedded with the article, and then the, the rest are going down. What I want to do is I want to go through. I, I want to start at the top. It's the easiest way, and then we we'll go we'll we'll go down describing the pictures, and Joe and I can get into detail. Yeah. Uh, what's really bad about it? It's it's easier than going. Well, look at this picture, and then if you scroll up and then go back, and, and it's just easier to go from the top to the bottom. So, that first picture there, Joe, because I I know you've seen it already. Um, it, it stands out right away. It to me, it, it's obvious what it is. Uh, I, I've already had an inch a couple interesting conversations. Uh, via chat or uh, email comments and stuff and Facebook comments about what it could be. Some people said it doesn't look anything like a church. But if you look in the first picture, it looks exactly... It like looks like a church. There's no doubt in my mind that that's a church. And the fact that, it, you know, mosques have a typically a different architecture. So, I mean, that's just your typical, standard, American church. No yep. matter what it is. And now, Why? Why would you need a mock American church? Just ask yourself that. <laughs> what, what would you possibly need for that? Well, so people you know? understand the mock American, the, well, the mock city setup um, is not a new concept. It's something old that the military has done for a very long time. They have mock cities usually. They, they, they'll make one up uh, for whatever they're going to invade. They did it before Iraq. So if you look at this, because this is one of the arguments I've heard already, well, just because it doesn't look like a city in Baghdad doesn't mean it couldn't be a city somewhere else. Well, if you look at the architecture, the all it's European, um, well, it's American style. But even if you okay, sloped, slanted roofs. Well, there's 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 European houses that have places like that, or, or Russia. Okay, well, that's fine. This is actual arguments I've had today. You know, like thrown at me. And, yeah, of course. Uh, well, well, here's the response to that. Okay, maybe it could be. So then, what you're telling me is they're planning to invade Russia. The European Union or the United States. Pick one of the three that seems most logical with all the other evidence that you have around you, and you tell me what you think they're planning on invading. Obviously, it's here that they're planning on invading their own country, their own home soil. The telephone poles, the wires. Why would they have the lines set up the way they do in an American city? That's one of the first things I noticed. Well, they need power, Popeye. But, but if you're trying to make it a realistic environment, for the, the soldiers and the Marines or whoever else, you wouldn't want to have stuff that they're not going to see blatantly there in the middle of their face because that's going to confuse them because maybe they might use something like that for cover or whatever. I'm not saying they're going to use a, a, an electrical pole for cover, but I'm just I'm using it as an example. Something like that. Maybe there's something a little wider out there. Maybe there's an electrical substation or there's got to be a little a little junction box at least somewhere on the property, right? So what are you going to tell me that oh, well, you know, that's there to run the power to the power, but that's not going to be in the middle of Baghdad or Afghanistan. They no. don't have that crap. They don't have line trucks to go out, come out at three o'clock in the morning when the line goes down to a path, you know, like a tree falling on it. That's not. 
This is strictly American, Joe. Come on. You know what I mean? The, the, the arguments I've, I've, you know, well, you know, I think you might be blowing it out of proportion. No. There's blowing nothing out of proportion. No. And I'm not, I'm not standing here with a bullhorn either screaming. I'm just saying straight up, this is creepy and this is obviously an a mock American city. Now that right. begs the question, who and why are they training to invade an American city? And I think we all know the answer to that, don't we? Yeah, well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons that could cause that. They've really set the stage for there to be just one of many reasons why they would have to do that. One of the interesting things is how, what they define as an enemy combatant or an extremist. Now, that's very important. You know, one of the things, uh, or one of the documents coming from the executive branch in 2011 was this strategic implementation plan for empowering local partners to prevent violent extremism in the United States. So this is what uh, Barack Obama said. He says, as a government, we are working to prevent all types of extremism that leads to violence, regardless of who inspires it. At the same time, countering al-Qaeda's violent ideology is one part of our comprehensive strategy to defeat al-Qaeda. Over the past two and a half years, more key al-Qaeda leaders, including Osama bin Laden, had been eliminated in rapid succession. And so, <clears throat> By the way, so were the SEALs that uh, participated. <clears throat> Uh, at any time since the September 11th attacks, we have strengthened homeland security and improved information sharing thanks to coordinated intelligence and law enforcement effort, as we found out today with the revelation that the NSA is taking all of this recorded data that they're pumping out and disseminating it down to your local police. Yeah, but they have no reason to train and do domestic operations like this no homeland security no mm -mm. no this is just harmless stuff seek i'll seek i'll seek yeah I'm, seriously i'm man. sorry I, i'm i thought i was listening to a speech back from the 30s we've strengthened our homeland security hey where's your little mustache a guy i know does uh, uh he used to do uh, commu uh communications for the seals and you know they actually trained down at fort chaffee and when they got there guess what dhs was there with their tanks and their full freaking, uh, you know, uh, assault gear, SWAT gear, the whole nine. I mean, they were just, they were, they had so much gear and equipment, and I mean, just unbelievable. And that the first thing the SEALs asked were, the hell does DHS need with all this? Who the hell are you fighting? You know? <laughs> Yeah, and and it really it it skeeved them out, man. They were like, "Whoa, this is weird," and, you know, looking at the architecture. Holy smokes! Dude, I'm telling you, I know people that have seen this. I, I, I've gotten a, a plethora of emails since I posted this, and every it's been from people that you know, like you said, people that you know that are seeing the article and saying, oh, I, "I've been there." Or I've trained in places like yeah, yeah. They totally, they're totally preparing to take on the American public. And then the opposite end of the spectrum of, you know, no, that's not happening. I know, look, I know it's scary, but they're doing it. So if we admit that they're doing it, then we could either, we could stop it and prepare for it. Uh, this doesn't have to happen. Here's, here's an interesting statement out of the SIP, the Strategic Implementation Plan. This is, this is interesting. <clears throat> Law enforcement and government officials for decades have understood the critical importance of building relationships based on trust with the communities they serve. Hmm. Now, uh, I have a problem with that, you see, because based on trust, here you have a mock American city that domestic agencies train at to do urban assault and confiscation. Just think about that for a second. And then read this. Now, this is coming straight from the White House. Law enforcement and government officials for decades have understood the critical importance of building relationships based on trust with the communities they serve. How do you trust the local officials, the state and federal officials, when they're doing things like this? And for what? You know what they do? They just like to keep that the um, prison industrial po complex populated. And they're doing a great job of it. And when they run out of room there, guess what? That's what the FEMA camps are for. That's right. 
that's when everybody, you know, you can't own a house anymore. You can't afford anything because wages are just, they're destroyed. They're decimated. Inflation takes over. You can't pay your bills. Oh, but come to these uh, re-education camps where you'll get three squares a day. We'll even put you to work. Hey, you get a job, get three squares, give you a place to live. No problem. Three hots and a cot. Same reason people join the military. It'll be great. And next thing you know, 1984. Oh, yeah. Coming to a state near you. A police state. And that's what this is for. I mean, if you can't identify that, I mean, I don't know. what You can live in a fairy tale world and say, well, you know, it's just coincidence that they look like American buildings. They're actually training to go overseas. Yeah, okay, like I said, if you're going overseas, maybe Russia or the any somewhere in the European Union. So who are we invading yeah. in Europe? No, I'm trying to figure that out because it's not grass huts or anything like that. So, you know, they're not, they're it, not going into Africa. It's just, or, dude, it, it, it's a stupid answer. It really is. And for, for them to try to, it, it's, I just want to smack people. No, well, no, no, just admit it. Just admit it. They're doing it. Look, there's the, there's the evidence. They're doing it. I guarantee yep. you, like, we, we had this conversation earlier. I guarantee you somebody somewhere this morning was face palming it, and somebody is in trouble. Right? Oh, yeah, they're like, Because yeah, <laughs> this stuff's not, you're not supposed to know about this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. You're not supposed to know this stuff exists. No. No, no, you're certainly not. Much like the deep underground military bases and everything else. The, the key to this is, remember, to disarm any sort of argument of, well, you know, they're just training to go overseas and do that. Domestic agencies. DHS does not operate in Afghanistan or in Africa. They operate within the bounds of the United States. I wonder how many foreign troops have been brought over there. Yes, the IRS, Criminal Investigations Unit, they operate within the United States. So, and that's just a, that's just a small portion. You still have the DEA, you have the CIA, the FBI, they all do it. Hey, it's a party down there. But it's one of the most sophisticated uh, mock town setups. Because they not only have, um, they not only have the you know the the buildings like that, but you know based on the information that was provided to IntelliHub, they've also got sensors in the building. They have FLIR that looks over the entire base. FLIR cameras all over this this town. They've got uh, cameras inside the buildings, along with sensors that sense your motion and other factors, biometric scanners, things like that. I mean, it's crazy. Well, I got a chance to sit down with uh, Shepard and the, one of the, the, the people that passed on the information. And um, uh, it was a very interesting conversation, to say the least, Joe. Uh, just, I, I know Shepard and I shared a lot of the, the information with you. That's you know, one of the reasons I was able to bring you on tonight is because you know all about this stuff, too. Like, you know, That's crazy. It's, it's just incredible, dude. I mean, wow is all I got to say. They have, which the pictures are in there, and we'll get into it because the break, I can see the break sneaking up on us in about 35 seconds. But uh, they have, like, animatronic mannequins is, I guess, the only way to put it, that they can yeah. make sudden moves or have pop out of a window. And they'll... What was that? What was that stupid game that... The, with the punching robots, the, the Rock'em Sock'em yeah, robots. Yeah, Rock'em Sock'em. That's what they look like. Yeah, that's exactly what they look like. But it's like it's like being on a police course where they, you have friendlies pop out, and what yep. they'll do is they'll have windows pop open, and maybe one of them will be like in the church. Maybe one of the lower windows in the church will be like a pastor, and then the top window will open up up there in the steeple, and it'll be a sniper. By the way, that's what those doors are, ladies and gentlemen. You see how they pop out open? That's so they can control them to pop out, and then they can close them too. They had them when I was in the fire academy, same setup, and that was like 20 years ago. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Yes, there's no mistaking it, ladies and gentlemen. Carnis Village. Carnis. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. It, it's the just, body. It yeah. stands for the body. Flesh, meat. Hmm. Mm. Very nice, Joe. Very anyway. Tomer-esque. Oh, but hey, we're the sick bastards, right? But right. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, I'm the one making a mock American town and then naming it 
you know, flesh city. That's real. I'm not the one anyway. Be a, be a heck of a paintball. Oh no! Don't get me wrong, dude. Now, if this was like, if a paintball company owned this, and this was just so you could go, you know, run around and paintball with your friends or your groups of different individuals, people you've never met, and have fun, like you know, places out in Pennsylvania and all these other places that I know of down here in Florida and stuff do. That's one thing. This is definitely a paintball field, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. This is definitely a paintball field, but not for recreational use. More like the advanced paintball field. And you and I will never get a chance to go play paintball on it. <laughs> Ever. Although, yes, it would be kind of cool to run around playing paintball. It would be cool. But, yeah, you're right. We probably wouldn't. Yes. I mean, maybe in the future when we straighten things out, we can turn uh, Meat Village there into something <laughs> useful. We'll change the name and we'll turn it into, like, Paintball Village or something. I like that. Meat Village. Let's just call it that from now on. I mean, just, dude, Meat Village. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes to show you what, you know, the raw meat. Well, what's Yeah, the Fleshville. Meat? Yeah, the people that are getting shot, that's who the raw meat are. And people that, you know, whatever, they're sick. Anyway, scrolling down to the second picture. Yes, right? the second picture. We've looked at the church. Now, looking below the church is another picture that's very creepy, Joe. And to me, it stands out, and we'll get into what we found actually looks just like it. But to me, it, it looked... Uh, it looks just like um, the. I thought I got I got the impression of like maybe small hospital or some sort of you know something like that because or even like a town hall. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Municipal, you know, a municipal, municipal. building because look at the look at the bus stops. Well, see, you got the bus stops, and then you got this, like the stairs going up, and that, yep. that the way that the building, the front of the building, there kind of juts out. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you could just like you're walking through the hallowed hall. Yeah, you could see the city seal. Right above yep. the doors there. That to me, it would be a town hall slash maybe even. Well, plus like look at our, look at right right off the top, uh, right off the front of the building. There's a flagpole. Like, well, yep, and and what do most small towns do? They incorporate their police station and their their town. yeah into their city hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what this looks like. It looks like a city hall uh, slash perhaps uh, police station in small town USAville anywhere with the handy dandy bus stops. Because the last time I checked. Baghdad didn't have uh, bus stops right outside. Yeah, well, I mean, if they do, they don't look like that, you know? Well, that's what, I mean, their bus stops are a little different. They're wide open usually, and most of them have scorch marks from shooting, and uh, they don't have state-of-the-art, brandy new little bus stops that you see. Well, maybe they knew now that we've blown things up and Halliburton's back over there. No, they don't. That's right. The money gets funneled into other things. They don't even have power going in most of the country. That's right. But this picture's very creepy. I mean, this, this is not... You're not going to see this in Afghanistan, okay? I'm, you're not. You're, you're not. This is not Afghanistan. This is get over it, okay? Stop it. You know, this is not Europe. This is not Russia. This is not Cuba. This is not anywhere other than here in the United States, okay? That's what this looks like. Look at the street poles. Look at the light poles in the street. Where else do you see light poles like that? You don't. Uh, you don't. No, you're right. You don't. You, d you don't end up seeing it like that. No, that concrete uh, light pole, no. No, it, it, again, it's this set up. Just... Dude, look at the roads. Look at the way it's set up. Yeah. People that have never been out of this country maybe don't understand, but look, I, <clears throat> I have, I know you have. This doesn't look like other cities. I'm no. telling you. It doesn't and again, look like European city. To me, these photos, dude, when I first saw these photos, right? Yeah. Uh, and you first saw the photos, you and I were looking over them together, and you and I were just like, Holy crap. Holy crap. Like, this is, this is an American city. And we were zooming in. Some of the, the, more, the, the more telling things are, like, when you see a picture and you zoom in on it, and you look at some of the stuff in the background, and you're like, oh, wow. Like, one of the pictures I found where one of the things in the background, one of the buildings, it looks like, you know, any two-story hotel, like a Days Inn or something. You yeah, know, with little with the little outcropping coming off the front. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of information. By the way, you can download the photos, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the ones that I have right now might have more coming soon, but uh, the ones that are available right now, they're in the articles. Is you can download them here, uh, downloads them as an RAR file, and you just you know open the you unzip the RAR file, and uh, you'll have all the photos there in high quality. They're huge, and you'll be able to open them up in Photoshop and zoom in and look at stuff yourself dissect this stuff i urge you to download them and look at them write articles spread the word fort chaffee don't go not, anywhere 
Not just a place where Elvis got his hair cut. Yeah, you got that right. There's a little bit more going on there than that. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, so moving on in the article, we're going to scroll down to the third picture because we're already ripping. We're almost, you know, we're over halfway through the the first hour already, uh, and we still got a ton of stuff to get out there. So let's get through the pictures first here. The third one, we got Arkansas State Representative David Meeks standing right in front of the sign that says Harness Village. Uh, in an earlier, I updated the article, by the way, uh, in an earlier, the, the first draft, I had accidentally put Congress. Uh, he's a state rep, so I, I made sure that I put Arkansas State uh, in, in front of Rep David Meeks. That way people would understand that he was a state rep and not uh, Congress. Right. So I did. Addri- I, I wanted to make sure that anybody that might have read the article, the earlier version, it was uh, he's a st- he is a local state representative. But it's just as bad. This guy's a local state representative. He's standing right by the sign that says Carnes Village. Well, hey, there's no doubt that it exists. It definitely exists. <laughs> I mean, well, and and of course he thinks it's probably he probably thinks it's cool because he's ex army. So, yeah, sure. You know, he's probably like, oh my god, this is awesome. You know, yeah. yeah. So that's great. That's just lovely. This is not awesome. It's not cool to have a mock American town. And this is definitely not for them rolling into Baghdad. This is for them rolling into any town USA. If you look at that picture with him standing there, dude, look at the depth. I mean, look at the look at the size. This is a perfect – like the way everything's laid out, it's perfect because of where he is. If for size comparison, uh, you know, yeah. from, and like now you can actually get an idea of the depth. And when you look at it – it, you look at the picture and you're like, "Wow, this is definitely an American city." I mean, this is something you'd see anywhere. Yep, well, you just in any old American town, you know, you'll find something like this. And the uh, the person who took the photographs issued this statement. He said, "I'm a former U.S. soldier and I've trained at military operations, urban terrain. That's M O U T sites many times prior to visiting this facility at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas." He says that the sites are generally very generic in appearance, block buildings that cannot be identified to any specific location or culture, block buildings used for basic entry tactics and training to fight in urban locations anywhere worldwide. My first experience at a facility that looked as if it had been designed for a specific region was Fort Irwin, California, at the National Training Center. In that location, they have a Mount City, uh, which is set up to resemble a Middle Eastern location. Quite logical, given the current war on terror with a focus on the Middle East. However, the center at Fort Chaffee seems eerily similar to any given U.S. downtown location. There's a church, not a mosque. There's a bank that has a drive-in ATM and even has a triangle of the local Arvis Bank. There are townhouses, a city hall, a two-story high school with boys' and girls' restrooms, and more. The fine details of the facility make it quite obvious to myself that this site was set up for domestic warfare training purposes or for a westernized nation that shares a similar culture of architecture to that of America. We like to say that we train as we fight. Given the current political climate developing in the United States, don't be so quick to dismiss this as a conspiracy theory. Millions of dollars were spent developing this facility with a very specific concept in mind. And he's absolutely right, dude, because... um, that is the one of the one of the biggest um, sayings in the military is train the way you fight, fight the way you train. That is the way they're doing this. That's the way the DHS is doing this. They're training the way that they would fight this, and the the way to do that is, you know what? Let's get this mock city here, and uh, it will be the most realistic way of being able to do these sweeps, you know, these neighborhood sweeps, like you saw in St. Louis, like you saw down in Miami. I mean, this is, but do it in a way that's discreet, that doesn't draw a lot of attention to themselves. Meanwhile, they just pick out maybe a half a dozen times a year. They'll roll out into a city, make people a little more acclimated to it. And then when the time comes, when they have to institute a martial law or there is some sort of breakdown, or maybe there isn't a breakdown and they're going after you, the extremist, because you have a blog, then what? You know, buddy? Dude, don't say it can't happen here. I, I don't want to hear it. Look That's at, right. I, scroll down to, you know, for people that, they, okay, you haven't shown me, haven't you? So what? 
Okay, so the one picture. We'll we'll skip a couple photos. We'll go back. I knew I didn't want to do this, but we'll skip a couple photos. Let's see. Let me count. So you see David Meeks, right? Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Go down five photos. Go down five photos and look at that. You got houses on the right and what could be either townhomes or an apartment building on the left. You tell me you'd find that in Baghdad or Afghanistan or somewhere else. Tell me that doesn't look like your street. I can tell you it's not in Baghdad or Afghanistan. I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> right off the bat, this reminds me of places in New Jersey, especially with the little train trestle thing. If you, if you zoom in on the picture, when you get the big picture, when you get the big version of it, ladies and gentlemen, if you download them, the, the picture, you'll see it's looking down the street and it's got the building with the, uh, it looks like a, um, like a town co- uh, townhome complex or an apartment complex on the left and then houses, a couple, there's two of them that are on the right and then a couple more buildings going down. Well, if, at the end of the street, it looks like there's a little walkway bridge and then there's a train, there's train tracks down there and what it looks like train tracks at the end of the street. So that looks just like most places that I have saw uh, growing up, up in North Jersey. I'm not kidding. Like that, that, as soon as I saw this, I was like, "Wow!" There's a couple cities in New Jersey I could I could name right off the top of my head that this reminds me about. Places down here in Florida, this reminds me about. Joe told me that this reminds him of places that he's seen up mm-hmm. north and, and where he is in even North Carolina. Everybody that has seen this has said to me, "Man, this place, they could name a place, and not just one, Joe, two or three at least, right off the top of their head, that this picture alone reminds them of." So, I mean, this is, <laughs> hello, if you see a picture of a training facility mo- that, you know, for Iraq, it looks like the buildings in Iraq. They build it to look like that, so their forces have some idea of what they're up against. If they're doing it to go into Afghanistan, they have mud huts. They're fighting the Taliban that are in caves and huts. Does, does that look like a cave? No. Does it look like a hut? No. Right. That's what I thought. No. No, no, no. And it's interesting. Again, you know, one of your um, comments on on your article says, although I agree with the points of this article, I would add my conjecture that these types of buildings are not solely found on American soil, e.g. modern districts of larger Mexican, South American cities, Israel, American workers' compound in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere, etc. And, and what I'm going to say is very simple. You're reaching really far. Because all you have to do is ask yourself this question. If that's the case, and if they are tr- using this for training overseas, then why DHS? Why FBI? Why IRS? Why DEA? Why do domestic agencies use it for training? If it's for overseas training, that's for here. So instantly f- killed. Oh, I would say so. Argument destroyed right off the bat. Doesn't matter at that point. Okay, so that you might find it in an American workers' compound. All right, if it's the Army doing it, I'll buy that. It's not the Army. If it was strictly the Army and the Marine Corps and, right. no, and nobody else, then I would say, okay, eh, you have I'd some legitimacy it. to your argument. To your, there's some yeah. validity to your argument. I'm not saying that you're 100% correct, but there's some validity to it. But when you have... Guys that were, uh, you know, there that were in the military there to train, right? And then you, they, they're telling you that they saw DHS there and them being in the military have no idea why the hell DHS would be in a mock American town training for what? Okay, that should set off alarm bells because it did for us. And that's the way it is. You have guys that are in a, in a facility like that for training that are in the military, and they're saying, hey, why the hell is DHS here? Warning! Warning! Wouldn't you, you say? Wouldn't, yeah. You know? I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Right. That's one yeah. of the three biggest lies. Mm. I, I mean, people, I'm going to tell you what, this is definitely not for overseas. I mean, look, the rest of the pictures, that's why the article is up there. That's why we're doing the show tonight. <laughs> is to, this is to explain, that, look, this is not about going overseas. Look at that photo. Right. Okay. If that one's not enough for you, any town USA down, down isn't enough for you. Let's scroll down three. No, let's go down four, five more photos. The picture it says it it just says Fort Chaffee Urban Warfare Training Facility, but the photo you can't miss it. It looks like a storefront. It's even got the parapet wall. 
Where do you see that construction? I mean, hello. What parapet walls? Come on, dude. McFly. Well, I'm, I'm saying the 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 whole construction with the parapet wall on the top. No, I know it's a it's a, like a little highway scenario. That's exactly. Doesn't this look like something? It's you'd, a sound barrier. Exactly. Like if you look at this, just the picture of w- where where you have the 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 mock um, uh, storefront, right? You mm-hmm. have a little gate next to it where you, you would have like maybe the dumpsters and stuff for rear access to the building. And then you have the two front windows and your, your front door, the parapet wall where they were, the, you'd have the sign, you know, John's Bagel Shop, Steve's Pizza. <laughs> yep, yep. Seriously, yep. or, you know, Danny's Muffler. And maybe the wall next to it would be an open bay. Or maybe that, you know, I mean, look at that and tell me anybody that could look at that picture and say, oh, yeah, I can't picture that in, in anywhere in the U.S. You're full of it. That's totally a, a U.S. storefront, man. Look at it. You don't have to be blind to see it. It's totally a U.S. storefront. Put a couple little, um, what do you call it, newspaper machines there in, in, that, in that open spot next to the two windows there. There's that open spot with the, where it's just gray brick. Put a couple of newspaper machines there. Slap a coat of paint on it. Put put Ray's Pizzeria above it. Open those two. You know, have those two windows open. Open that door and uh, picture in those windows I- I- instead of those things there. Picture that one big window, like a big bay window, uh, with uh, a big neon sign that says Steve's Pizzeria. Or how about a dry cleaning service? Or how about any other number of small businesses that that could be here in the United States? Sure. And again, that's. You say, why, it could be anywhere. DHS. That's all you have to say. Because it's uh, a hard argument to make when it's domestic agencies that are also using this facility. And once you do that, it instantly becomes American. Hate to say it, but that's what it is. The Army, well, they have the luxury of making it, well... Well, boys, we know it looks American, but uh, today I want you to pretend that you're in Turkmenistan, and that's a hut. All right, roger that, chief. (laughs) You know? But DHS, they don't get to do that. Dude, I know spec ops guys that told me that when they were in Iraq... In yeah. Iraq, they were doing, they'd be training to go invade, you know, you guys are going to go into the Sunni Triangle, and you're going to go hit this city or whatever, and they'd be doing, you know, they'd be in the middle of training for that mission, and then in the middle of training, they'd be like, okay, mission change up. We're back home in the United States, and it's martial law. And they're all like, what? And these are like special forces operators <laughs> that are over in Iraq, getting ready to go fight over there. And they're training for that mission, and they get interrupted in the middle of it. And they're like, okay, we're going to change things up. Martial law in America. And these guys were really bugged out by this, dude. And this was five, six years ago, at least. So don't think that they haven't been training for it. And this facility just shows you. Dude, this, the, I don't care what anybody says. When it comes to like mount training facilities, this thing is like... I would say top notch compared to the older one. It is. I, it's, it's it's the most sophisticated one out there, especially with the dummies, which we'll get into too. The, the the dummies that are involved in this. I mean, normally they have like cardboard targets by windows and stuff that'll pop up. No, 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 no. Or maybe wooden ones. Yeah. Not in this scenario. No. Like rubber mannequins. That are yeah, motor, somewhat, motorized ones. Yeah, you know, like animatronic or whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah, we'll go with that. I like that word. They look like rock'em, sock'em robots. I like how Joe put that. That They do. Yeah. And they can just change the heads. They can Because you can see that they can take the head off and like put it, they probably put a woman's head or a kid's head on it. And then they just change the clothes and put it in front of a window. And then they paint all the, the soldiers, paint all the crap out of it. The cameras are all over the place. They monitor what the soldiers did. And they, you know, they'll critique it, whether they did it right or wrong. I mean, they, they, it's... Monitoring what they do is not new or anything. I mean, that's just now they have a technological aspect with the cameras. But the, this thing is definitely not just, well, you know, hey, they're going to go play paintball. Yeah, it's not, definitely not just for them playing paintball. All right, we're going to break. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Let's get right back into it because there's just too much information to get out. So not enough time. So let's go scroll back up to where you see the picture of Representative David Meeks there. Let's go to the picture beneath it, because this is what Joe and I were just talking about. There's the animatronic mannequin. Joe's rock'em sock'em robot. It's exactly what it looks like when you look at it. It does, dude. It, it, it's like a human form. Yep. 
But you can see, if you look at the picture, you see where the neckline is. You see they pop the head off and change whatever. And they can they just put on whatever clothes. And then they get paintball. That's why they're rubber. So, you know, they're thick, obviously, that thick, thick, super thick rubber that can take a beating. They're going to get hit with paintball, so they'll be able to be reused. It's not like they're going to put live rounds through it. Uh, and, you know, some people are like, well, that's good because, you know, you need to be able to distinguish between, uh, you know, what, what's a target and what's not really a target. You don't want them to shoot innocent people. And I'm like, but they're training to shoot in an American city. Hello? Does you, do you not pay attention to that? that? It's against the Constitution. What's that? And a bunch of other laws. But hey, don't pay them any mind, right? The only time they pay laws any mind are the ones that they want to enforce, like the retarded ones. Like the illegal tax law, income tax law. Oh, that's maybe why the IRS would be training here. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Opozo care. This is part, of, I, this is part of the Opozo care right. money. How many people oppose that, you know? What if people start to uh, be like almost like a conscientious objector or even one that just refuses to pay because they, they don't believe in it? Then what? What are you going to do? You know, the IRS, if you don't pay your tax bill, guess what? They're going to storm your house and take everything you got. So, I mean, just think about the economy and where it's going. You know, the real economy. 900,000 jobs, I think, created this year, and out of them, 730,000 of them are part-time. Really? Okay, well, that, that, that's working out for us. I don't know. I just feel prosperity everywhere. I walk down the street, and I'm just living and breathing it. I don't know about you, Popeye, but it's just, it's like there's rainbows and pots of gold everywhere. Well, I mean, dude, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that they're lying I mean, through their teeth. And by the way, when they create government jobs, let's get something straight. When they create government jobs, they're not creating jobs. They're not real, true jobs. They're not productive jobs. Okay? No. That's what's important. There's a difference between, you know, you could go out and make a job for anybody. If it's not productive... And it's just leeching off the system. It's part of the problem. It's not part of the solution. And that's what all of this is. I mean, look, look, you make this huge bureaucratic nightmare, and, and then you have just cases of rampant abuse of it. Just massive cases. You were and talking we're about it before, an hour one on your show. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're paying for it. Think about that for a second. Look at the service that we're getting. And we're paying for it. And like happily, ha 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 ha! What can I do about it? Could you imagine if, if Dish Network or your cable company treated you like this, or even um, if you went to a restaurant and you had like the waiter just looking over your shoulder the whole time as you ate? Would you go back there? Would you would you give them uh, service anymore? No, you'd stop going there. You wouldn't pay them anymore. Well, why don't we do the same to the government? You know? Oh, you know why? Because they've got a little mini Gestapo that, um, you know, they can come and break your legs if they, if, if they want to and make a point. And then, Well, that's you know, what the IRS is. Look, the IRS is, it's like a white-collar version of Vinny Mafiosa. and his, you know, two cousins, Johnny the Fist, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, Steve. And, and and Steve's Steve's kind of special. They 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 only let him out once in a while, and they come over. And, and Vinny says to you, "Hey, look, you know these two right here. Steve, he likes to play with fire. He's a little mentally unstable. Yeah, uh, you know I, I can't be held liable if he burns, you know, your store down. You know he likes to burn things down. But you know what? If you give me some money, I'll go out of my way. I'll make sure I go out of my way. But it, to, to make sure he doesn't burn your stuff down. But if you don't pay me, I can't be held accountable, you know, because, hey, I don't got the time. But if you, maybe you give me a little money, I could take some time off of my busy day to babysit, you know, Steve the fire bug, you know. And, and that's the, you know, and then, of course, it, it, you know, a shakedown. And that's what they do. Hey, look, either you pay your, your income taxes or we come to your house with a SWAT team. That's, that's how they do it. I mean, is that really voluntary? 
because according to actually if you read the the rules on the books in the tax code it says that the thing that whole thing is voluntary anyway i know i know crazy right well if you listen yes. if you listen to the friday show i had joe bannister on maybe you should tune into joe's show here on unbound saturdays joe knows what he's talking about go watch freedom to fascism but I digress. Anyway, end of the first hour. Second hour coming up. 59 short, quick seconds. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Joe and I will be right back. Check out the article. It's on federaljack.com. Right under the featured story section. Click on it. Scroll down to the photos so you can follow through for the rest of the broadcast. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. To hour number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye from federaljack.com. Joining me for the second hour here is my good friend, fellow radio show host, veteran, and uh, Joe's like a brother to me, and all kidding aside, he really is like a brother. Uh, my good buddy, Joe Joseph. Yes. And we've been going over this just. Uh, uh, I don't even know if Orwellian would be the term. I guess creepy is the only way to describe yeah, this. Yeah, I was like chilling. It's one of, you know, I don't look, not a lot of stuff surprises me, freaks me out, creeps me out. Yeah. This creeps me out. Because I know what the implications are. And yeah. I don't, don't want to go there. And it's not that I fear, oh, do you, you fear, you afraid DHS, fall, fall, you afraid military. I don't want the citizens to have to go to war with DHS or the military. It's not needed. We don't need to get to that level. So I'm not afraid of them, but that's creepy because that just solidifies what we already knew that they were doing. And when you see it in physical form like that, it just, it really did a game. Dude, I got to tell you what, it, 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 it didn't, I don't want to say it sent shivers down my spine, but it, it, it did give me the chills when I first, when I first saw the photos. I was like, wow. It, it just makes, it makes you, just wonder how advanced the plan really is. And I mean, if you take a look at everything that's going along and use history as your guide also, because you know that there are many factors in play here that could cause a scenario where you have that kind of thing. I mean, look at this latest quote terror threat. How do you know what information they have and what's credible and what's not and what they're telling you? How do you know what's real and what's, what's not anymore? I mean, the government has now lied to you time and time and time and time again. So when they say that there's a, well, we have credible evidence that there's a terrorist attack uh, set to go down. Let me tell you something. And chances are they lying about that, too. And it's not where they say it's going to be. And it's going to end up being somewhere else or it's a distraction for something different. But they put it out there for a reason. And um, all I can say is I always err on the side of their intentions are nefarious. Fear, 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 fear. Yeah, and just pushing it constantly. Fear, 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 fear. That's fear porn. This is, this is a prime example of what I, by the way, I call fear porn. I don't know if the Unbound listeners have ever heard me use that term. If you go back and listen to my archives, I've used it in the past. But, uh, yes, I like to call this fear porn. Oh, my God. We were afraid of another Benghazi-style attack. Really? So now Susan Rice does the right thing? Really? Suddenly she gets a conscience, right? Sure. <laughs> okay. Mm. Right. I'm sorry, but this is all just fear, 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 fear. Oh, my God, be afraid. Oh, my God, be afraid. Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. <laughs> and then right on cue, they bring out the videotape of... What's his name? Ayman Al Zahiri or whatever oh, the frick his name is with the same, glasses. Yeah, the right. same picture of him doing the same thing. Speaking Bullshit. The same, yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. Did that, I'm sorry. Did that, I'm sorry. I couldn't hold it in any longer. It reminds me of that episode of Star Trek uh, where they go and there's a like a planet of midgets and they have this smoky image that comes up on the screen. Did. I mean, he's the boogeyman. <laughs> Ugh, disgusting. We'll be right back. You know, when I decided to do this show tonight with Joe, we were talking off air, and it was all, like, all weekend we've been chatting about this, but when we decided to do this show, we knew that it was important to hammer this and to just drone on 
continuously about the point that this exists here in the United States. Right, and, and also some of the legislation, dude, that, that goes hand in hand with that. Well, well, again, yeah, because look, this is the type of thing that backs up the whole FEMA camp scenario, martial law. This, just, this is just one more piece to the puzzle. It's a huge piece, but it's a, it's a piece, it's, a, it's a, just one piece in a much larger puzzle. I mean, look at the look at all the like you said the legislation, Joe. How much legislation? I mean, Joe's been working his butt off the past couple of days trying to because when we first found out about this, we didn't want to just come on air and talk about it, or you know, uh, Shep didn't want to write an article uh, based on crap. So you know, after it was published, Joe and I wanted to make sure it was kind of you know it it passed the the sniff test if it were yeah and, and dude i mean the the alarming stuff that you found i mean i i found a bunch of stuff but you found uh I, you know you looked on the legislation side and i mean it it just again it's like a one big puzzle piece that slides into this much larger puzzle and that puzzle includes martial law fema camps and the legislation yeah all that kind of stuff the enemy's the enemy belligerent interrogation detention and prosecution act of 2010 let me tell you what the the meat and potatoes of that bill has. That uh, the bill summary. Uh, the bill requires that any person who is arrested on suspicion of terrorism against the United States. And now, <laughs> suspicion is a very, very general and broad term. I suspect you're a terrorist. I suspect you're a terrorist. Why? And so, because of that. You could be placed in military custody for the purpose of initial interrogation and determination of status as a, <clears throat> un, uh, quote, unprivileged enemy belligerent. Remember, the NDAA in 2010 went and classified the United States as a battlefield, and that never got overturned. So... The United States is a battlefield. They talk about it all the time. You hear warmonger Lindsey Graham saying it. Oh, yeah. I don't mind if the NSA listens to my phone calls. I'm not doing anything. The homeland is a battlefield. Hey, Lindsey, you need your little black mustache and your gray, uh, you know, snazzy suit. Yeah, he's suit. Heinrich Himmler. Jesus. Seriously. I mean, they should all just put on their Nazi uniforms and get it over with. You don't have to wear the little patch. You want to call yourself something else? That's fine. You're still fascist a holes because that's what you're doing. Yep. The He's bill a scumbag. Me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. The, the bill defines an unprivileged enemy belligerent as an individual who has engaged in hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners, has purposely and materially supported hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners or was a uh, part of al-qaeda at the time of capture but if you're part of the muslim bro brotherhood no problem but what's al-qaeda <laughs> al-qaeda well <laughs> al-qaeda doesn't really exist well of course it I mean, doesn't it, really it, it doesn't really exist it doesn't i'm sorry people oh no bye bye my son was in Afghanistan fighting Al Qaeda. No, technically he was fighting the Taliban, and they didn't attack us on 9/11. Just so you know, we need to stop with that too. Well, the Taliban—if they didn't attack us on 9/11, they didn't. They were actually the government in charge at the time, and uh, we told them, you know, we were, we want Bin Laden, and they said you can't have Bin Laden unless you show us some evidence that he actually did it, and then we'll hand him over, no problem. But we want right. evidence. And they said, you know, no, we're going to come in there and take him, basically. I mean, six months before, they were at the White House. So let's not act like there was no political ties there. Or, you know, they're terrorists. Rah! Okay, right. Okay, look, stop it. Okay. Let's, let, me, let me just quote. Let me just quote. <coughs> let me just quote someone here. Let's see if okay. anybody knows who this is. Okay. Let's see if anybody's ever heard this little statement. There is no Al-Qaeda. The so-called Al-Qaeda that we see are actually, uh, I, I can't pronounce it, it's Kahar, I, I don't know how, it's C-K-H-A-R-J-E-E-S, so however you spell that, Kar, Karhees or Karjees, it's, it says the so-called Al-Qaeda that we see are actually Karhees along with Mossad, CIA, and RAW led and trained mercenary gangs like TTP who pose as Islamic jihadists and create justification for global information war 
and propaganda to launch a new war against another Muslim country. The truth is there is no Islamic army or terrorist group called Al-Qaeda, and any informed intelligence officer knows this. But there is, propaganda, there is a propaganda campaign to make the public believe in the presence of an identified entity representing the devil, only in order to drive TV watchers to accept the unified international leadership for a war against terrorism. The country behind this propaganda is the U.S. You know who said that? Former British Foreign Secretary Robin Cook. Inter-Services Intelligence. Guess what? Cook died mysteriously while hiking in the Scottish Highlands with his mm, wife. Imagine that. Sent his son a text message an hour before he died. Hey, I'm at the top of the, the mountain. This mountain yeah! he's climbing to. And hey, I'm at the top of the mountain. Uh, it's a little rainy, but you know, I, I reached the peak. It's great. And within an hour, he was dead of a sudden massive heart attack or uh, was some sort of you know like heart condition or whatever. Right, it right. Was, was the thing. It, it must have been sudden. the lack of oxygen because he was climbing Everest. Yeah, because you know the CIA doesn't have the heart attack gun. No, nothing like that. But you, I mean, you just heard the former British Foreign Secretary. His name's Robin Cook. Go look him up, ladies and gentlemen. He said, there is no Al-Qaeda. Let me repeat that. There is no Al-Qaeda. Do right. you know who Al-Qaeda really is in their eyes? You. You. That's right. And Each and every one awake. of you. Yeah. And even the people that aren't awake. I mean, That's seriously. Right. And then they get, the, they get the police and the military all ramped up, believing this myth that there's Al-Qaeda. And then, they, and then they also teach the police that, oh, my God, we're out of war with scum. Don't even get me going on that. Yeah. And, the, and so this bill authorizes the president to establish, <clears throat> quote, a high-value detainee interrogation group consisting of ex executive branch personnel with expertise in national security, terrorism, intelligence, interrogation, or law enforcement to perform the interrogation and status determination. The bill defines the, uh, that the paramount purpose of such interrogations is to protect the U.S. civilian and facilities through uh, thorough and professional interrogation for intelligent purposes like waterboarding <laughs> and other, you know, maybe like um, electrodes on the nipples or something like that. I'm sure they do that, too. Oh, yeah, you like that? You know, do it like uh, lethal weapon style. But seriously, this is... This is what that bill covers. And there's nothing, there is nothing to stop them from utilizing that in a domestic case. Case in point, you know, if you write something that sparks off a lot of outrage, they may be coming after you. If you start... Oh, you mean like Michael Hastings? Like Michael Hastings. Oh, but that's a conspiracy theory because, you know, all Mercedes, brand new 2013 Mercedes Benzes just explode how while you're driving many, down the street. How many instances have we heard in the mainstream media of the Mossad using magnetic car bombs that's their MO. to kill Iranian? Yeah, they kill the Iranian scientists. and That's their, like, that's their, gosh, I mean, that's their weapon of choice. You know, when it comes to assassinations, they, they love... They actually invented that technique. Yeah, I'm that's sure they did. That's a Mossad technique. The, the driving up on a motorcycle, two, two of them, one ride, one drive, you know, one guy in control of the bike, you know, motorcycle rider, driver, whatever, operator, and the other one uh, is the one that has the magnetic bomb. They ride up, they usually all in black with black helmets on on a black motorcycle. They ride up, but they come out of nowhere. They pull up really quick. The guy in the back takes the magnetic bomb... Uh, he adheres it to the side of the car, you know, flicks a button, obviously, throws it on the side of the car, bye, have a nice day, and then the, the, the operator of the bike just hits the brakes and veers off and goes another way, and then ba-boom, good night. And think about this for a second, folks, if you think that this is tinfoil hattery or conspiracy theory or anything like that, think about what the government is telling you. Are they telling you the truth? Do you trust that they have your best interests at heart? Because I can guarantee you, I have more of an interest in your well-being than they do. Because your well-being means that I'm going to be okay. Because if you're okay, I'm going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Together we'll be all right. That's what we do this for. What do they do this for? What do they do what they do for? Is it for a duty and honor and everything that's... Good, or is there nefarious purposes in mind? 
I mean, the writers exposed that one today. You know, the SOD, Special Operations Division, SOD, of the DEA. Just passing along uh, tidbits of information down to local law enforcement. And then changing or recreating the crime, you know, the story to match the crime. So that SOD is not in there at all. No, no, no. We didn't tell you anything. I mean, that's where we, that's where we what are. What does SOD stand for? Special Operations Division? Division. Yeah. Ugh. SOD. You know, just so they're so predictable with their little acronyms. Yeah. But, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? And then you, and then you say, well, wow, you put all this together. And I even haven't I haven't even gotten into the other stuff yet. USA Patriot Act, the NDAA, Military Commissions Act. I mean, we can go on and on. But um you put all that together, and now it doesn't seem all that crazy now, does it, that there is a mock American city where domestic agencies go and train. Train for what? For Urban assault. That's the only thing it can be for. They're not selling Avon and are you sure? Are you sure maybe to... DHS and IRS don't go there like on like company retreats, you know, like to blow off steam, and they just built it like as a big paintball resort? Wouldn't that, wouldn't, wouldn't that be relieving? You know, I'd be a little PO'd, maybe waste fraud and abuse a bit, but at the same time, you know what? I could swallow that a lot better than I could swallow what. Right, I would rather that than what they're really doing with it. Yeah, at least I'd be like, "Oh, all right." You know, well, if I, you know, yeah, I would just be like, "Okay, fine, you can keep it. You don't have to tear it down, but you got to open up access to the public." And you know, okay, you want to charge people for the use because there has to be cleanup of the facility. That's fine, but you know, oh, uh, oh, the public can't use it. The public, oh, the public's not supposed to know about it. Right. Oh, I'm not supposed to know about it. Well, what's it for? Mm, classified. <laughs> I'm t- I do it. See, the National Security Council created this whole national security state, and that's see, everybody's like, "Where did we? You know, where, at what point did we go wrong?" And you know, everybody likes to go back in history to a certain point here or there. Honestly, one of the biggest problems with like the way things are now, with everything yeah. being classified, is at the end of World War II. That's when things drastically changed because now you you know everybody was still in this mode of we just fought the Nazis and we beat the bad guys and we you know we were looking over our shoulders for spies and everything and it was that perfect climate to get into this national security state that they've created and now we have you know what came out of it is this you know the the NSA and spying and going through your your emails and every communication and your daughter's cell phone I mean. Really, do, do they need to be listening to your daughter's cell phone? Well, it, it, makes, it makes me safer, Popeye, because they're listening to my daughter's cell phone because your daughter talks to Al-Qaeda? I mean, really? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay, if your daughter talks to Al-Qaeda, then maybe I can understand why they're building a uh, a town, uh, a mock U.S. town, because I guess, you know... All, all, of these, all of these attacks have come from overseas. All this information comes from Yemen and places like that. Why are they listening to you? Well, you know what? I'm sorry. If I looked in downtown Yemen, and it looks just like those buildings. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Okay, I'm being a sarcastic prick. It does not. Okay. And again, if they're trying to catch bad guys in Yemen, why are they listening to your daughter's cell phone? How is your daughter's cell phone conversation with her boyfriend going to help them catch a bad guy in Yemen? Yeah, it won't. Wake up and smell the coffee. We'll be right back. Don't think for a second, ladies and gentlemen, that they're going to have to round everybody up to go into the FEMA camps. Joe, you and I had this conversation off air. A lot of people are going to go willingly to the camps because they're going to like uh, the mall. You know. Well, it's going to be a lot better than the alternative, which would be like homeless. Or, you know, it's, just think about that. Think about what happened when the housing bubble burst and what that meant for the average American homeowner that got into mortgages with adjustable rates and um, perhaps maybe bit off a little more than they could chew on. As a result, they got foreclosed on and the banks and the government 
saw the biggest transfer of property and wealth that this, um, this country's ever seen. The biggest transfer from the middle and lower class to the upper class. So much so that now there's really not a middle class in this country. You just have the, the haves and the have-nots. That's what I like to call it. You may not think that, you know, and, and I think I have a lot in my own little bubble, and I do. But, you know, let me tell you something. They think that you are a have-not. So, okay, I'm a have-not. That's fine. But the, the, the fact is, is that that divide is getting very much more defined. So, this is, you know, dude, this is all part of that plan. Well, it's like Craig said in the chat room, all they have to say is that they have free Wi-Fi at the FEMA camps and everyone will go and willingly. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. But just look at how, how it parallels, like, 1984. You know, 1984, they were, they were fighting that war. You know, that fake war. Everybody was just convinced. What are we doing now? Oh, we're fighting a fake war. Yeah, economy's collapsing. Uh, income levels are at 1995. Wait a minute. You mean the level. war of terror? I mean, uh, the war on terror or of terror? I, I can't. I, 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 the uh, war of terror! Yeah, I, I can't be sure what it is. We, the war of terror. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had the proper uh, pronunciation for it. The war of terror um, that we're fighting. You mean, you, mean, you mean there's no boogeyman, Joe? No, of course not. It's, it's, all, it's, like, it's like the great and powerful Oz, dude. Think about it, you know? It's what it is. Uh, and people, you know, honestly, people don't see through it. It amazes me. But that's why it's so important that we expose these things and we talk about this with our families because all this stuff ties it together. You know, if you, t if you take, you have to look at the big picture. You got the legislative side, you know, the indefinite detention clause and the NDAA. Let's not forget, that got reinstated. There was a temporary injunction on it, and it got overturned. So that's back in play. The president, why, he knows how to use it, because he's trying to keep us safe. So let's keep us safe by having indefinite detention. You know, like Bradley Manning, he was a real threat. Was it, was it Jay Carney that said that we don't, to, we, we don't do that here as a country, we don't torture? Or something because they were, you know, with Edward Snowden, they were like he. It, somebody said something. I think it was Jay Carney. Maybe one of the reporters said something to him about the, you know, some comments or something that had been made, and he was like, "Well, we here in this country do not torture. This is the United States, and we don't torture." Yeah. Something, something to that effect. And I was just like, "You two-faced, lying sack of monkey crap." But how does he expect anybody to believe him when the, it's openly admitted that they do? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, um, come on. You, you guys, guys had even help themselves. Bush had his attorneys rewrite le what the legal ju ju you know, definition of terrorism was under their guidelines so that they earned terrorism of uh, torture so that that's what they could, they could get away with it, so that they could do it to people. I mean, uh, hello? I just, dude, I want to bash my head into a wall sometimes. Yeah, it's just that like, wall hammer is looking very appealing right now. Oh, I just get frustrated sometimes. And there are people that don't see this, but it's right there in front of your face. Like, I mean, he just like, yeah, we don't torture in this country. And people accepted that. They were like, yeah, we're America. We don't torture. Um, really? Um, wait a minute. I, I thought you said that we waterboarded and waterboarding, waterboarding was good, but waterboarding isn't torture. Really? How about I waterboard you? You tell me if you think it's torture. How about that? Anybody that wants to tell me waterboarding isn't torture, cool. Line up for a free waterboarding session, and uh, a after you go through the session, you tell me if you think it's torture or not. Huh? It's torture, trust me. Okay? It is. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Don't, oh, we're America. We don't do that. Unless we need to do that, and then we do it. <laughs> I mean, you can't have it both ways. War of terror. War of terror, ladies and gentlemen. The global war of terror. Not war on, war of. We'll bring it back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so for the past hour and a half, and for the hour before that, which on Joe's show, you've heard you know, about the bad stuff, right? we talked about yeah. we're chaffy. We've talked about how it connects to, uh, and uh, on a basic level, we've just shown you how this all 
interconnects like puzzle pieces with the FEMA camps and all the legislation and stuff like that. Now we're going to talk some solutions. Next half hour, we're going to focus on positivity, some solutions to this stuff. Because as I said, I don't like to just throw out the negativity. I like to also bounce it out and throw out some positivity. And by the way, I have to mention, if you hear any snoring like that in the background, that's my little munchkin mutt dog. Uh, She hangs out with me. You all know Monster. You've seen her pictures before up on Facebook if you've ever seen it. Since her sister died, I don't have the heart to kick her out of my studio because they used to both hang out in here, and then I would kind of shoo them out uh, for you know when I go on air because they, as you could see, her little snore box makes a lot of noise. But uh, since her sister died, I don't have the heart to kick her out. She likes to hang out with her daddy. So if you hear a little snoring in the background, you know I my little sidekick's bias. Anyway, I want to talk solutions, Joe. I want to talk positivity because there has to be some sort of solution to this. I mean, there isn't just, oh my God, the train is coming and we're, you know, we're glued to the train tracks. No, we can get off the train tracks. I mean, there is a solution. Uh, there's always a solution and we do not have to watch the train go off the tracks. As no. It, you know what I mean? This, no, this, yeah, you're absolutely happen. right. Dude. Well, you know, it's, it's all about awareness and information, spreading the information and making people aware because if you make people aware, they will not, if, if, especially if it directly relates to them, they won't put up with it. And the more and more people that you do, it's kind of like, I kind of equate uh, people to like that traditional Marine Corps joke. If you stand in front of a wall, you know, pretty soon you'll have a dozen Marines standing behind you. Well, that's the way the public is, really, if you think about it. Um, If you get enough momentum, if you get enough people with you, the rest will fall in line behind you. Just the way it is. So, I mean, that's why it's so important that we keep pounding away and getting this information out. And to be honest with you, in the past two weeks, there's been enough information to pretty much wake anybody up. I mean, it's just been, this is great in a way. And the positive thing that I gleaned from this is you can't make this up. (laughs) I mean, it's all right there. So you just tie it Dude, all you together. have a state representative. You have a picture of him standing next to yeah. his, it's his Carnish village. I, mean, I know. You're, you're done. You're, I don't care what anybody says. Meat village? Really? Yeah, meat village. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, like I said, oh, they're going to be trending for overseas. Yeah, DHS. Say no more. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Because, I mean, if it's a domestic agency and they look like American buildings, guess what? They're training for here. It's just the way it is. And you can try and downplay it all you want, but what's wrong is wrong. And um, it's time that we stand by our convictions and not be afraid. Don't be afraid of consequence. I would be more, I would look forward to seeing the fruit of your labor, seeing the seeds that you sow bear fruit down the road, knowing that your children and their children will have a better life if you fight the battle now. Do you want to hand it off to them? I don't think you'll be able to. I don't think we'll be able to. I think our generation is stuck with having to fix this. So the best thing I can say and the most positive thing that I can take from this is, boy, in the last two to three weeks, they have shot themselves in the foot about a thousand times over. And all of that stuff is Those being... Those are fake scandals. Stop it. Yeah, but it's all being documented Those in the mainstream fake, media. They're fake scandals, Joe. According, they are fake. Yeah, well, according you know. to the president, he came, on, he came on over the weekend that does his little weekly... Oh, yes, they're phony. Yes, that they're said phony. Well, they're all fake, phony scandals, that they're yes. fake, and that we don't have to worry about it anymore. So stop it. It's just a right-wing conspiracy against a, a very good president. It's because he's black. Did I cover all the bases? Mm. I just wanted to make sure I covered all of their retarded arguments. Did I? Did I? Co- it is so. It's so retarded. It really is. You know, people that fall for the left-right paradigm and and people that fall for this racist. Th- it just it it kills me. It kills me. Take the blinders off and see that. Guess what? We're all alike. We're all in the same boat. You know, the civil rights, during the civil rights movement of the 60s, guess what? 
we were all lumped together at that point. You know why they killed Malcolm X? And it wasn't it wasn't the Muslims, by the way, that killed Malcolm X. That was that was a frame up. The government killed him. You know why they killed Malcolm X? Because he when he came back from Africa, he realized that it wasn't about black versus white and, you know, we must kill the white man and all that. No, no. He realized what the real deal was. He realized that there was poverty all over the world and that there was this huge inequality, the very same inequality that, that scumbags the big new Brzezinski talked about at the CFR yeah. meeting, okay? The very same, very one and the same, that people were becoming aware, you know, aware of this. Well, Malcolm X became aware of it, and he started to speak about that. Okay, you had Martin Luther King. What did he start to talk about? It wasn't just civil rights. See, they figured they would probably shut him up just giving black people the right to vote and you know equal rights, right? Oh no, because then he started to go against the war in Vietnam. That's right. He started to talk about civil Uh-oh. rights for people all over the world: the rich versus the poor, the haves versus the have-nots. The That's real right. fight. The real fight, Joe. And what happened to King? They blew his head off. Actually, they blew his jaw off. Shot him in the face, right in the jaw. Good old, by the way, Jesse Jackson was there. Ladies yeah, good old boy. Yeah, scumbag. Yeah, that's a loyalist right there. Oof. He and Al Sharpton. Uh, Tawana Brawley. Oh, oh, by the way. Oh, she, yeah, that, that was just in the news, wasn't it? Yeah, she's got to pay. Go look up, I think it's the New York Post. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a link to it on Federal Jack. Tawana Brawley, remember I brought her up? Yeah, go, go look her up now. She's actually just started paying back one of the guys that she defamed. Yeah, yeah. Go look up Al Sharpton and Tawana Brawley, and then you'll see why he does what he does. Maybe you'll look at what he did with the whole uh, that that whole George Zimmerman thing in a different light. It's all crap, man. The whole media is crap. They lie to you. They get you scared. I mean, that's what this. Yep. I don't know. Maybe they're going to pull something off. I you know, if they do, then I'll eat my words. But I don't think anything's going to happen. I think it's out there to scare the crap out of people, and it it, it works. Because it gets people ramped up, and then it helps take. They're they're throwing everything they can at the at, at people because, dude, it's just one thing after another. Yeah, and and the thing is, they do it in the guise of terrorism because they know it has no face and it has no borders, and they do it like that so they can get away with this because, again, it's the ultimate fear tool. It is. I mean, to have Mister Boogeyman. Uh, this is better than any Cold War or anything else they could have imagined up. Oh, terrorism. I mean, this is great. And with a broad well, brushstroke, they can paint us into it as well. Well, because terrorism never goes away. What did Rumsfeld say after 9-11? This, this could be a never-ending war. Really? Really? You see, because the Russians, eventually you've got to end that war, right? Eventually, yeah. you have to end wars, and people end up getting a distaste for a, a, you know a distaste for them. And what happens is, in that lull between you know maybe one war and another war, there's that chance that there might not be that another war because you have that lull where people start to get back to normal life and not killing and destroying everything. And they 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 go, you know what? I don't I don't want to kill and destroy. I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. Now I'm gonna tell you what. Ninety eight percent of soldiers that are done, you know, Marines, Airmen, sailors that are done with their service, anybody that's actually had to go do anything, or even if they they, they worked at a base for, you know, and they they never saw combat. Doesn't matter. After a long enough period of time, when they leave, they don't want to go back and do. They don't want to go back to war. They don't want to go back into that mindset. They want to go on with their lives. You think guys want to run around killing people all the time? Maybe there are some people that are into that, and you know they they do career and they well, I would fight or kill. A lot of that stuff's pumped into their heads. Yeah, I mean, even the Roman warriors wanted to <clears throat> stop fighting after a while and go have a friggin' farm and you know raise a family, right? I mean, come on, every we're a perpetual war, dude. Everything from since World War shit, World War One, but the Civil War. I would say, not even, since the Revolutionary War, since our inception, we've only had, what, like, what is it, like, 40-something years of total peace, I think? So yeah, like something like that. 46 or something like that. I forget the exact numbers, but it's somewhere in, like, the 40s or the 50-something years of peace that we've, that we've ever been at in this country, in the entire country's history. The rest of it, we've been at war with one thing or another or some other country or this or that. It, it's ridiculous. And people are okay with that because our whole culture has been brought up with we, the greatest generation, the World War II veterans, they fought Hitler and fascism and they're the reason why you're not doing the goose step today. We are doing the goose step today. What are you talking about? The Nazis weren't defeated. 
the German military was defeated. The Nazis and their ideology were not defeated. We absorbed them. Into, and it created what we have today. They weren't defeated. There's more to history than you know. The hell out of here. The Nazis were defeated. We won. Yay. Okay, that's not how it is. Why don't, you, why don't you take a look around now and tell me if the Nazis were defeated? You tell me. Go, go take a look. Go, tell me, can, can you freely ride um, the, uh, the subway in New York City with, uh, if you're uh, you know, a, a black guy without having, being worried about being stopped and frisked? Right? Well, that's just because you're black. Well, what about if you're Latino? Well, that's just because they're racist. But where does the ideology of them having the right to stop and search people at random anyway come from? It comes from this, you're part of this government, police, military class that's better than the ordinary citizenry, and we need you, this is the elites, we need you to police them and keep them away from us. That's what they're doing. They're creating this governmental, they're, well, they're trying to, this, this separate class. They're getting away to the middle class, and they're literally cr creating this class of you work for the government, whether it's military, agent-wise, whatever, you're a bureaucrat you know, of some sort. They're creating the government class. So you're going to have the haves, the government class, and then the rest of us. That's what they're trying to do. Why do you think you see the IRS cl you know, crying to Congress, we, we can't be held accountable. You know, we, we don't want the, our health plans to change under Obamacare. Well, that's the law. But we don't want our health care plans to change. People are going to end up quitting, and you know, they, they don't want to lose their health. We like our plans. But you're, you're subject to the same law that everybody else is. But we want waivers because we work for the government. So the IRS, who's going to enforce Obamacare on you, and come raid your house and SWAT team you and is practicing over, uh, it, you know, at, at Paintball Village, we'll call it. I, 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 by the way, when you download the, um, the pictures uh, of Fort Chaffee, you're going to see it says uh, Federal Jack forward slash police state forward slash uh, paintball camp. Uh, that's that's you'll, it says that that's what the the RIR file is titled. I, I titled it that way on purpose. So anyway, uh, if if when you see the the title of the RIR file, you didn't download the wrong one. But anyway, I digress. So you have the IRS training at facilities like Fort Chaffee to yeah. come enforce Obamacare on you, Joe. Because I mean, think about that. I buy Ob but you didn't buy Obamacare. But then they go to. Congress and say that this is the same agency that says they don't want to be subject to the very same law that they're training at Fort Chaffee to enforce on the American public. Yeah. I mean, w does anybody see the problem with that? Like, hello, that's a perfect example of go government out of control and the reason why this stuff needs to just be abolished. The IRS in general, total, get flushed it down the toilet. It's unbelievable. I mean, just think about that for a second. Think about how easy this is this would be and, and how believable now had we said this five years ago people would probably say wow dude no way i mean even i remember saying wow can't get many can't get much worse than bush geez this is awful holy smokes i mean this is crazy they just pick up where they left off doesn't matter if you got a deer or an r by your name and they just just drive it home and if Romney won, guess what? It'd be the same thing. Doesn't matter who it is. They put the people in place that can get the job done. And I'll tell you, what we're seeing now in this country, especially the stark similarities between now and the crash of 1929, gosh, watch that documentary, Crash of 1929 on PBS. Phenomenal. Yeah, I know. I know. Somewhere in history, I've seen you know economic collapse and then fascism rise up out of it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Where have I seen that before? We're going to break. We'll be right back. I'll tell you what. This is a touchy subject because all night yeah. I'm watching the Globe uh, uh, on Federal Jack while I'm sitting here chatting. I, I, I occasionally go over and I check the chat room uh, every like 10, 15 minutes. And uh, I see people chatting back and forth. There's a good conversation in there. But I noticed that Washington, D.C. keeps pinging on, uh, off of uh, the globe. Falls Church, Virginia, uh, if anybody knows anything about the CIA. And then, of course, Joe saw, and Joe just saw this one for himself, 29 Palms out in California. So a big hurrah to the Marines that are listening right now, whoever it happens to be, or the civilian contractor on the Marine base out there that is tuned in, uh, listening. 
but uh, and perhaps maybe it's someone that's being told to tune in or and read the article there uh, about what we talked about. I mean, it's it's just interesting. There are certain nights that like I'll do a broadcast on something, or I'll have a certain guest on. You know what I mean? And I can see that globe, and I can just see who, almost who's listening because you can see who's pinging off it. And it's like, well, you know, if I want to put my "Quote unquote tinfoil hat on for a second. I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be a civilian out in uh, uh, there in Virginia and perhaps in Washington D.C. But really, at Twenty Nine Palms, hmm. <laughs> really, I yeah, don't know about that. It's uh, not really a big civilian uh, hangout, you know. What no, I'm not not really. <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> so good. I hope they're listening and learning something, and I hope you guys find something of value. Hope you go through the archives. There's a huge Veterans Affairs section over there if you actually want to learn about what they're going to do to you when you get out and how they're going to screw you. Yes, and you go can always donate out. to an organization like ours, too. Uh, just go to unboundradio.com and make a contribution. Well, you know, look, honestly, look, the FBI gave a contract out to a, co- a company like a year and a half ago to yeah, record, record all internet-based broadcasts. So they're, we're being recorded. So, again, go over to Unbound Radio, hit the donate button, drop like 20 <laughs> bucks in, you guys have job security. I know the, the contract was for like $575,000. Don't be a bunch of greedy a-holes. Okay, that's my tax dollars anyway. So it's like the circle of life, right? You, I, gave, I paid tax dollars. Those tax dollars went to your contract. I really didn't have a say over it. But since you're recording, listening, let's complete the circle of life. All you have to do is go and donate to Unbound, and then that money will help keep the network going, and then you'll have a job. And then because you donated that money back to us when we end up paying taxes, right, because some people yeah, still yeah, taxes, yeah. well, then that money will go back to you. Circle of life completed. Yay! <laughs> So go ahead. Since you're listening, I know you guys know where it's at, unboundradio.com, the donate button, and just click on it and say, uh, thanks for the job security, love the FBI. Or wh- actually, you're not the FBI. You're the civilian contractor that they, they contracted it out to. So whatever your contractor name is, you know, thanks for the job security, love ABC Incorporated. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Scum. Let's go with that one. Ugh. Honestly, how do you do that? How do you do that job? Like, how do you, dude? What do you do? I, I record like all these internet-based broadcasts. Oh, really? Like, is like you guys like listen to them? Like, you like them? Your fans? No, no, no. we I record it for this company for the government. I like my job because all I do is be a dick and help spy on people. I mean, I mean, if you want to record them, that's fine. Actually, the archives, or or if you you guys could save yourself time in recording. Actually, you know. Cost-saving measure. Instead of paying a company five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars to record the internet-based broadcast, why don't you just, you know, ha- however much a subscription is yearly to Unbound, and you could just download them, the high-quality ones too. You wouldn't have to pay mm. for them to record this stuff. Wouldn't that be smarter? I you, like that idea. How much money could you save if you did that? Boy. You, you could do that with all, these, like- all the different you know places that do the internet radio. They all have subscription services. I mean, you could you could buy a subscription to every alternative outlet out there and still not spend a hundred thousand dollars. And they spent five hundred and seventy five at least to have this company record us. I'm telling you, you guys are wasting money. Seriously, Boy, yeah, you're right, man. We could do it a lot better. I'm just saying, if you're going a lot smarter, yeah, you don't have to really. I mean, it's out there. We're putting it out there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Because to tell you the truth, I don't care if they record it or not. Matter of fact, I hope it ends up in the Library of Congress one day. You know, in the archives, just like uh, uh, like um, Thomas Edison's wax cylinders. You know, those recordings. I hope they end up there. I really do. Their Library of Congress is catalog- uh, cataloging every tweet on Twitter. Well, that's what I'm saying. I have See? fun with that. Because there's, what? I mean, although there's good links and good tweets out there, yeah. Have fun with that. That's great. The people are going to look back 50 years from They're now. They're going to be like, wow, man, our ancestors were dumbasses. Dude, I'm telling you, great. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for cataloging that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are. They're going to do, do, you know, YouTube, 50 years from now, people are going to be like, wow, grandma, you were a dumbass. You're a dumbass. What grandma. a dumb hoe you were when you were 17, grandma. Good job. <laughs> you know, girls gone wild there, huh? Good, yeah. Good job. Yeah, I bet you never thought that gra- that your grandkid would see that, huh? Yeah, good job. I hope globalist is a cuss word down the road. Kissinger, you know? Kissinger should be a, a verb for something you have to go do. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> so should Rothschild. Yeah, Rothschild and Rockefeller. My dog just took a big Rockefeller on the grass. I got to go pick it up now. <laughs> you know, something like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. I'm trying to leave you on a positive note. I'm not doom and gloom. See you all again tomorrow night. With that, we're out of here. Remember, solutions to our problems are an inside job, for real. They really are. It's really an inside job. The solutions to our problems are an inside job. We're out of here. <laughs>